Well, it is that time. The time to cut into my very expensive, over $50 per yard fabric. It's the outer skirt time for Cinderella. Today's sponsor is Acorn TV. So Acorn TV is the largest commercial-free British streaming service, which can immerse you into sophisticated and artful storytelling. Their library contains favorites from Britain, Ireland, Australia, and beyond. Discover the hard-to-find gems, timeless classics, and new favorites. With Acorn TV, you get premium commercial-free access for only $5.99 per month. Plus, it's on all your favorite devices, so it's easy to find and access. Especially considering this past year of staying at home and all that, Acorn TV is a great way to find new and refreshing shows after you've used up all the other resources. Plus, they have weekly releases, so there's always something new to try. My family and I are currently browsing the large selection, and we found Brokenwood Mysteries. We had discovered it a year or so ago, but no longer had access to watching it. So we were very excited to start watching this New Zealand murder mystery show again. Escape to Britain and beyond without leaving your seat. Try Acorn TV free for 30 days by going to acorn.tv and use promo code Bella May Designs. Happy watching and thanks again to Acorn TV for sponsoring. So first of all, there are three underlayers. I believe there are two of these white layers and then there's the iridescent fabric. These three layers are gathered together, but they're separate from the next few layers. The very topmost layer is silk crepelin or crepeline, which I had to dye a cornflower blue, and you can find that video about that here. Then comes two expensive layers. These are the Umissima fabric layers. The under one is a lilac, and then the next one is aqua -y blue. I purchased a fabric called Super Organza that weighs five grams per meter, and you can find a video about that up there too. And I am pretty sure this is about the same thing as Umissima. Can't be 100% certain, but it achieves the same result. It floats. So we've got white layer, white layer, iridescent layer, lilac Umissima, aqua blue Umissima, and cornflower blue silk crepe line. So with that, let's get started. First, since I'm cutting out many, many panels for all these layers, I like to tape my pattern down and then lay my fabric on top of that. This of course only works if the fabric is somewhat transparent. And this method just eliminates the extra steps of moving and aligning the pattern times however many panels I need to cut. I'll start off with the iridescent layer. I'm making this a seven panel skirt. I might add the pattern I have taped down is more of a guideline. It, it's not an exact pattern for each of these skirt layers. I'm just gonna wing it kind of. I figured out the approximate length of each of the panels and also how much I want in the waist. For this fabric, I'm choosing to do a French seam. This stuff is really just not fun to work with. It frays in the weirdest way, <laughs> and it's really annoying. And a serger wouldn't even contain the fray. So French seam it is. Now onto the two white layers. I was originally planning on using synthetic organza for these two layers, but I decided to just go the whole way and use silk organza. I am also doing seven panels for each of these two layers, but I'm making the bottom of each panel just slightly larger than the iridescent one, because if you look at this, it looks like there's a bit more bunching up happening with those under white layers. Also this time, since I'm making two layers exactly the same, I am layering up the fabric quite a bit to cut multiple layers at once. And for these layers, I'm doing a serge for the seam. So I aligned these two white layers and the iridescent layer, and now to trim down the edge. I left a good bit of ease in the length, I'll do the final trim later, then it's time to gather the edge. For now, that's it, I'll do the waistband and hems later on. On to the expensive stuff. It is so slippery and floats about, and none of these clips are in slow motion, just FYI. It took quite some time to get it all lined up, but eventually I did get quicker at getting it all smoothed out, ready to cut. Though I can tell you that the edges are not the best cut edges out there. 
they've definitely got some waves and a little bit of jagged some places. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> for each of these Umissima Super Organza layers, I am doing nine panels. After getting them all cut out, it's time to do the seams in the most unusual way. So remember this discovery? The lines of gems that appear to be under the top silk layer? That, I think, is the seams of the Umissima. Or at least I'm pretty sure. I was not going to sew this light fabric, it's just so lightweight. But I'm not even going to even test it, at least not right now, because I'm not going to do it. But a standard seam in this fabric just wouldn't look right, even if you were able to sew it straight and well and all that. So slippery. But anyway, I am going to use the gems, and they will create the seams for these two Superorganza Umissima layers. So out comes my Swarovski crystals. I got them for gemming the outer skirt and I got them in various sizes. I didn't know I was doing this to the seams yet, so I had to scrounge about in what I bought. But the ones I ended up using for these seams are the smallest I got, size SS08. But I actually ended up buying some more and I got them in size 06. So these crystals are all crystal AB, which means they have a multicolored shine instead of a clear sparkle. And they are hotfix. It is my first time using hotfix. I usually just use a syringe of glue, place some glue, and then place the crystal on top. But out comes the hotfix applicator and the process begins. And I am never going back to regular crystals with separate glue. Hotfix saves so much time. I can't even express how much time it saves. But at the same time, it still takes time to place all these crystals. But anyway, for the seams, I am slightly overlapping the two edges and then placing crystals along that overlap. The glue connects both edges of the fabric and ta-da, <laughs> the seam is created. Though there is a lot of crystals involved in creating just one seam. <laughs> For each layer, which contains nine seams, I used about 1600 crystals, so times two layers, that's a lot to place. The amount of time it takes to heat the glue on the back of the crystal is a few seconds, and you sort of get a feel for how long is enough once, you know, you do several thousand of them. Now, these are not the only crystals that need to be placed. Remember I showed you this after dyeing the silk crepe line fabric? Well, crystals got applied to them. Oh, and by the way, this silk crepe line layer is also made of nine panels. So for the gemming of this top layer, I used crystal sizes SS08, 10, 12, and 16. The majority are 10 and 12, and honestly, not many of them are size 16. I just got those just to add a couple big ones because I saw that on the original dress. So I first started off placing the larger crystals. Both of them can be placed with the same tip on the applicator. And it's just a random placement. On the top third or so of the panel, I didn't place any of the size 16. And then from there, gradually they were placed so that there's more at the bottom. I did a same basic pattern with the other crystals. So with the smaller crystals, there were more at the top and less at the bottom, and with the big crystals, there were less at the top and more at the bottom.
After placing the two larger crystals, I'm changing the tip. It's very hot, unless you're patient and let it cool down first, which I wasn't. But then I place the two smaller sizes. You may be wondering why I'm doing each panel separately. This is just to save some hassle of working with a very large quantity of fabric that the nine panels of the skirt will create once I sew them all together. But I am leaving two or so inches along the edges uncrystallized. If not, those crystals will get in the way of sewing the seam. So I am leaving a path in order to create that seam. So continue this for each panel. You're finished once you've placed 10,000 crystals. Seriously, <laughs> based on what I have left over, which isn't much, I placed over 10,000 crystals between making the seams for the umissima layers and this top layer. So now get all the panels attached together. This layer is surged together with metallic thread. Thanks to this photo, I figured that out. I'm using a two thread serger overlock and it was a challenge to do it without the thread breaking. So slow was the method to keep that from happening. Eventually, they got finished and two layers of Mizma and the top layer of silk is aligned up and gathered up. And here's where I realized that there just wasn't enough gather to the waistband. It just needed some more volume up there to look right. So what did I do? Oh yeah, just cut some more panels of Unissima and Silk Crepe Line, which needs to be dyed, of course. But in the end, it was worth it and worked. <laughs> the dyed colors of the few extra panels came out nearly the same. It's slightly noticeable, like, individually, but once the skirt is all together and gathered up, you can't really tell. But I added four panels to the skirt layer and two to each of the Umissima layers. Though, I don't really like how stark the iridescent layer is. It's just very stripy looking, if that makes sense. The outer layers sort of bunch up and leave the very white iridescent and in places and it just doesn't work. Um, Though, considering these photos, you could say it works and looks fine, but it doesn't show up like this in the photos and movies. It doesn't have that stripy look of blue and then white, and I just personally don't like it. So I am going to make one of the under white layers blue. <laughs> this will be just under the iridescent layer, but since that iridescent fabric is sheer, the blue will show up through it and hopefully soften that stark white. So I'm just going to throw one of those white fabrics into a dye bath and see if that does the trick. I think it worked. I like it a lot better. It just looks so much more connected and together. So on to the waistbands. For the underlayers, I want the gathering to sit a little bit lower than the waistline to reduce bulk at the waist. So I'm cutting out a waistband on a curve, then I'm just going to sandwich the gathered edge into this lower edge and top stitch in place. Then some hooks and thread bars to close it up. For the outer layer, I want it to be very small and fine, like this photo here. I am going to use a one inch piece of linen tape. So first I'm going to line up one of the edges to the outer edge of this gathering, then a fell stitch to secure it in place. I don't want to machine sew this because one, the fabric, and two, there's quite a few gems along this edge, and I just can't have a needle hitting those. After that edge is secure, I'm trimming down the raw edges of the gathers, and then folded the linen tape over to contain that edge. Some more hand sewing to secure that edge. Then a clasp at the end and it's done. So I forgot something, right? The hems. Yes, I know, I haven't done the hems yet. 
I actually have some adjustments to do with the petticoats before I do my final hemming. I am just leaving it unfinished and I'm calling it done for now. Once I do the hems, I will share with you all about what methods and such that I did. Even though I used tiny quarter inch stitches to gather up the waistband, the gathers just look very large and poofy compared to the original. So I'm going to heat up my iron on the lowest setting and kind of work the gathers to lay flatter, but also smaller. A huge thank you to my patrons for their continued support, especially in this specific project. They are the reason that I was even able to buy this very expensive Umissima Super Organs of Type fabric. Plus, a huge shout out to all of you who contributed by buying patterns, swag, and even some of you who paypal me their support. Thank you to everyone for that because I'm able to use this very expensive fabric. <laughs>